President Trump has possibly broken numerous laws. Do you plan on, if elected, requiring your attorney general to investigate him and, if violations are found, prosecuting him after he is out of office? Or will you pardon the president for all crimes committed if it's found he did so, including members of his administration? Uh, I certainly wouldn't pardon him, and I think we should investigate him if we believe that that's what's called for by the rule of law. And in the meantime, what we need to do is beat him to make sure that he's just a one-term president. Robert Mueller said yesterday, quote, if we had confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. Given that, where do you stand now on impeachment? Well, listen, I think Bob Mueller made it very clear that Congress needs to do its job, and I believe that Congress needs to do its job. I've read the Mueller report. I heard what Bob Mueller said yesterday. I believe President Trump has probably committed impeachable offenses, and I think Bob Mueller should come to Congress and testify. Congress should subpoena other people, and if the president doesn't allow them to testify, we should go to the courts and insist that they testify, and we should uh, follow where the evidence leads. We need to follow this process, though. There are a lot of tweets going out today about what we should do, impeach or not impeach, and all this stuff. It is very important that we take a page out of history and do what they did with Watergate, which was to make sure the American people understood really what was at stake. If we go down the road tomorrow and impeach Tr President Trump, we're actually giving him a favor. That's what he wants, to be able to say he was railroaded. To, and, and then to have the impeachment from the House go to the Senate, where I guarantee you Mitch McConnell and the Republicans are not going to convict Donald Trump. They're going to acquit Donald Trump, and then he's going to run for president saying he was acquitted. You mentioned the tweets. I'm sure you're referring to several of your Democratic competitors yeah. saying now that they do believe that at least impeachment proceedings should begin. Why are they wrong just on that? I, I think that we should call them, you know, Russia proceedings involving the president or whatever it is we want to call them. If that leads us to impeachment, it leads us to impeachment. I wouldn't be surprised if it did. I say the president, in my view, I think he committed impeachable offenses. But we have to go through the process. And to me, it's one of the problems with our politics today is we want to go out and, and tweet and, and immediately react, a race to judgment. And we need to be more strategic than that. We need to be smarter than that. That's one of the reasons why we have a climate denier in the White House, even though the vast majority of Americans believe that climate change is real and we need to do something about it. And I'm tired of losing to these guys. You know, I'm tired of losing to Mitch McConnell. I'm tired of losing to a guy like Donald Trump who never should have won the presidency to begin with. So I'm not saying we shouldn't follow this evidence where it leads, but I am saying we should bring the American people along for the journey so that they can also help us make a judgment about what the right thing to do is. Okay, Senator, let's get back to the audience. Uh, Christina LaPlante is a PhD student studying political science at Georgia State University. Thank you, Senator. Um, recently, the governor of our state signed House Bill 48-1 uh, uh, into law, which severely restricts women's access to abortion. In a world that becomes more technologically advanced with each day's passing, state governments across the country are responding by restricting women's rights and not expanding them. So as president, what would you do to ensure that women, and not the government, have the right to make decisions about their own bodies? That's an easy, short answer for me. Everything I possibly can do to make sure Roe versus Wade, Wade is the law of the land and to make sure that women make these decisions, not the government. And that's the way it ought to be in this country. practical terms? Well, what does it mean? I think it means making sure that the judges I appoint are judges that will uphold the precedent of Roe versus Wade to begin with. It means making sure that I, I think Kamala Harris had a good idea the other day. I haven't had a chance to study it, but her idea that the Justice Department ought to have something to say if states uh, have lost court battles and then put further restrictions on women as we had with civil rights, uh, the Civil Rights Division, I think that's a really interesting idea too. Make, you know, this is what's happening in this country. I mean, women's reproductive rights are under assault all, all over the United States. Women's health care is under assault all over the United States. We have managed in the Senate to be able to hold it back. But that doesn't mean there are not huge parts of America where Texas is a good example, where, where Planned Parenthood is stripped of any ability to serve women. And, you know, that's not the way it ought to work. 
John Tester, who's my friend from Montana, who just won re-election miraculously uh, to the Senate, said last time he was running that his daughter was having to fight for rights that his wife never had to fight for because her grandmother had won those rights. And that is true. And they are trying to turn back the clock, and we need to fight it with every ounce of strength that we have. Well, Christina mentioned what's going on here in Georgia. Uh, Senator, many entertain entertainment companies have put Georgia on notice about this new law. You probably know, I'm sure people here do, film and TV is a multi-billion dollar industry here in Georgia. Netflix, Disney, NBC Universal, Warner Media, which owns CNN, they've all warned that they will halt future business here because if this law goes into effect. Do you support that? I do support that. I think that's awesome. I think we need, we need more of that kind of advocacy in this country. We need more of that kind of activism by the leading corporations in America on issues like this and issues like climate change as well. So just now, to be clear, like, you support a boycott on the, the I do. businesses yeah, boycott? I absolutely do. Well, you asked me, do I support the businesses' right to boycott? Okay. Well, let me take it a step further. Do you support the notion of I do. I think, it's, I think it's important, it's helpful, and it's necessary. Look, this is a moment when our democracy is under siege in so many different ways, uh, from the White House uh, all the way to these state legislators. And we'd, it, this isn't about just politicians. This is about all of America rising up and saying, we're going in a different direction. Let me ask you on a, <laughs> a bit of a related note. As of this month, 100, 100 of President Trump's judges have been confirmed to the federal bench. And it's a milestone that was made possible by Senate Democrats uh, when you changed the rules a couple of years ago to make it so that just a majority, a simple majority vote would allow these judges to get through. Now, you call your vote to support that your biggest regret in your 10 years in the Senate. You say you did it because you were a member of the Democratic leadership. What have you learned from this regret? Well, what I've learned from this regret is, first of all, it's important to be honest when you make a mistake. Second, um, my objection is not that we could have, that Mitch McConnell would have done anything differently. It didn't surprise me at all when he said today, if there's a vacancy next year, he's going to fill it. He's the most cynical person in Washington, D.C. And I believe we need to at least be as strategic as Mitch McConnell. The Democrats need to. I don't want us to be as malevolent as he is. I don't want us to be as cynical as he is. But I want us to be as strategic as he is. And when it came to these decisions on judges, we helped him every step along the way. And now, as you point out, Donald Trump has twice the circuit court judges that Barack Obama had. And it's shameful. And that's why we need to elect a Democratic president. That's why we need a Democratic majority in the Senate. And that's why we need elected leaders in Washington that are going to be as strategic enough to take on a guy like Mitch McConnell. I don't think we've done that very well over the past 10 years.